year it was 1947. We interrupt this program to bring you reports of unidentified flying objects over Roswell, New Mexico. I just saw this strange thing and it just flew right over my head. Headline edition, July 8, 1947. The Army Air Forces has announced that a flying disc has been found and is now in the possession of the Army. Army officers say the missile, found sometime last week, has been inspected at Roswell, New Mexico, and sent to Wright Field, Ohio, for further inspection. <laughs> Ever since the Roswell incident back in 1947, there has been many conspiracy theories surrounding the crash. None more so than the findings of three aliens, two supposedly dead and one barely alive at the crash site. The American Air Force heavily denied any knowledge of this and put the wreckage down to a crash weather balloon. But people were not convinced and their suspicions were even more aroused when 47 years on, film footage showing an alien autopsy hit the headlines. To this day, people are still asking questions about the autopsy footage. Is it real or is it fake? My name is Keith Bateman. I am going to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, as I was involved in one of the world's greatest hoaxes. At the time, I felt that the footage that I gave to Santilli wasn't brilliant. Um, I didn't feel that it would fool anybody, personally. I thought anybody with any technical mind or the industry would see straight through it. When I first decided to make the footage, in my mind was to try and shoot it very badly so it looked very authentic. The footage was filmed in colour. I kept playing around with the aperture on the camera to give it this uh, effect of a flicking light uh, as you would do on an old film projector. This was in my mind so that when I actually got the footage I could downgrade it, which is what I did. I actually dropped it um, down black and white. I then pushed it through the VHS machines and then recorded it again on beta. We then pushed the VHS uh, through the computers, which allowed us to then animate um, scratches and effects that made the film look old. Then this was all put back to Betacam, which gives us our master. This is Mark Starkey, model maker to the film industry talking about the Santilli footage. The alien autopsy footage um, in itself was, as a, as a piece of, of filmmaking, is very good. Um, but to be a convincing piece of footage, i.e. 1947, it wasn't really, it didn't really stand up. It was uh, way too grainy. There was no flicker on the screen. It was very clean. It looked like it had been shot on, on video or a, an up-to-date 35mm camera. Um, as far as the alien involved in it, um, it didn't look like it had an accident. When you're actually making an alien um, for, for such uh, productions, you have to take into consideration that what has happened to the alien, where the alien is going, what, what's it doing, uh, whether it's a carbon-based life form or whether it's a silicon-based life form or whatever. So once you've actually taken those into consideration, you, you then create the alien from that. It was too clean. It, had, it, it should have had some sort of like head injury. What killed the alien? It did just die because it felt like it. It had the accident, there was some reason, there was some trauma that made this alien die. And there was no, the only trauma afterwards was when they'd actually opened the alien up and cut up from one of its legs. The programme will run for approximately 52 minutes and will be available at the end of March. Is it all a hoax or do the government know different?